Hello there, welcome to my channel. I'm going to be providing you a trading guide of sorts to understand how to trade in the Pokemon trading card game online. Thank you for watching. So, first we'll start it off. Obviously, if you're watching this, you want to understand how the trading feature works. So let's do a little short uh, expose on how all this works. So you have the My Trade Offers section, as we can see right here, where Nathan is telling us that if we don't have any trades up, we can go to the Create Trades and create a trade of our own. So there's also a Refresh button. Don't pay attention to this for now. We will focus on this later. Then we've also got public offers, offers by many other people that they've been making. You may actually see repeats of names for people that are posting more than one trade a minute. Uh, you'll see offers to me, where if that's the result of if you make a private trade to someone. And then finally, your trade history, where you'll be able to see a compilation of the last 200 trades that you made. So now we are going to discuss the create trade section, because that concludes our understanding for what are the tabs. So we've got a public trade. For public trade, you can easily see on the top it says, I am getting. And everything that you're going to add on this side, which includes every card in the game, so let's include one that I don't have, uh, shift tree. So I do not have any of this shift tree, but I can put it on this side because I am asking for it. Then I can go to this side, and I can always add any number of packs from my four trade section. Let's pause that, shall we? God, Spotify can be a pain. <laughs> um, but you can see that, you can see if I right click on this, it's got this little thing marked right here. As long as you've got a tradable amount of them, then you'll be able to mark them for trade. And if you can mark them for trade, you can easily see them just like this. Now there is a way to get around having to mark things for trade where if you uncheck the filters button, notice how I now can see all my cards that don't have that filter marked. However, it is important to know that whenever you are creating a private trade, so let's say I want to create a private trade with OKC tra uh, Trainer, notice how he has a bunch of these things marked, but he doesn't have a lot else. That's because he didn't mark his cards for trade. He only marked these specific cards so that's all I can see. So it's important to know that if you want to be trading with people on a private level, then you're going to want to mark a lot of your cards for trade. So you can also see your friends list here, and you'll be able to remind yourself of their names when you go into a private trade and decide to trade with one of them. We saw Dead Man, Dead Maniac. There he is. So we could press accept. We notice that there's nothing he's got marked except for Rebel Clash Packs and Psychic Energy. So I'll mark my own Psychic Energy too, because that way we have a easy understanding of how this works. Next up, we're going to go to the Trading Post to understand how that works. The Trading Post is on the right side here. You click this comment section, then you click plus to start a new discussion, and then you press Trading Post to get in here. It should be very at the very bottom here. So nice and easy. Now, trading post is a bit dead at this time. It's currently about 2.45 a.m. my time. Um, so we won't be able to see many offers. However, the normal structuring for an offer is uh, LF, standing for looking for. Let's say I'm looking for, I'm looking for any three packs and for trade, one RCL. Now you can also do brackets RCL, and now it's going to show up with the set symbol. What is the set symbol, you may ask? If we go in here and we see, notice the bottom here of every single card from Rebel Clash, it will have that set symbol, and it's nice and easy to see and use. So as long as you know the set shorthand, which for Rebel Clash, it's RCL, then you can put that inside the brackets and you can use it to your heart's delight. So those are Sword and Shield and Evo that I just showed. And you can easily see which ones are which right here, where we've got Darkness of Blaze, Rebel Clash, Sword and Shield, 
then we've got all of the sun and moon sets with their uh, icons right here. And if you're having trouble understanding what the shorthands are, the best way, in my opinion, to figure out how to access it for a new set, let's say, uh, let's just take here. So if you export your deck and then you go into, let's say, Notepad, uh, then you type that in and you press Enter, then you will see your cards. You will see your cards and you will see all of them in a text format, which is easily uh, copy pasteable by your friends. And it will also put the set number and also where they, they will put the set as well as the set number right next to each other. So it's very easy to tell what card it is. So that concludes our, under, our basic tutorial on how to access the trading section. Uh, the only thing that I will add now is that these filters are very important if you're trying to look through somebody's collection for whatever you want. So let's say I wanted to look through 999 Ben Nunn. Let's say I wanted to look through his collection and I only wanted to see Pokemon Vs that were also full art. So now it is filtered every single Pokemon V that he has marked for trade that I, uh, and also it has to be a full art. So this is a very valuable thing to just get the hang of early on and you will make and you will find that it makes a lot of this a lot easier. So with that we will move on to trading. So if you're watching this, I assume that you want to know how to flip, how to snipe, how to make an investment, how to take advantage of day one trades, how to hold your value on a profitable deal. So first we're going to focus on flips. Flips is fundamentally one of the easiest ways to make profit in this game. It, result, it revolves completely around the basic principle of buying low and selling high. Obviously, some people have probably already told you that, but honestly, that's as simple as it gets. There's more to it than it seems. However, in terms of having a basic understanding, this will be sufficient. So let's say, uh, what, let's check how much the Dene GX is going for. So I am getting, we're going to go on Broken Bonds, and we're going to do 195A, because I want the alter, alternate art. So as you can see here, it's immediately about, I want to say 10 packs. The reason I want to say 10 packs is because I'm not going to pay 11 when it has been up for at least 8 hours. And I do not want to take a trade that is so not sought after that it almost expires after eight hours. Now we can also see here that there's other trades for 10 packs, which mean, which makes me think that it's probably about nine actually. So I do this repeatedly while loading the trades to completion to figure out what is actually the price, what is actually going on here. So as you can see, based off of the trades that we are seeing, it is seeming that Dedeni GX is probably about 9 packs, 9.5, if you wanted to put a precise value on it. So based on this understanding, we can also see the I am giving section. So if I am giving Dedeni GX, so as you can see, Sono Pavaro is really desperate to start picking up these uh, Dedeni GXs, and he's creating a lot of offers for them. Now, something to note about these offers is that a lot of these offers aren't are for cards that aren't in standard anymore, and they're also older, to the point where they're not as good anymore, to the point where if you take this trade, you're the one who will be taking a hit. So I want you guys to be careful because if you start taking these trades, no matter where you see them, then you could find yourself without anything to trade later on. And having things to trade is a wonderful thing. <laughs> so if we're going through, yes, we see that there's about eight and a half packs because that Marnie is specifically about three quarters of a pack to 
the pack sometimes, uh, it tends to oscillate. Uh, but you can see this would obviously be about 8.5 minimum if I was selling my Dedenne, and I do not want that. I'm looking for at least 9 packs. So as you can see, if we go here, we find an offer for 9 packs. Now, reminder that if we can sell for 9 packs, but we can only pick it up for 10 packs, then that is a loss of 1 pack on our end every time that we take that trade which is why it's important to understand when you're flipping, your goal is just to make margins. So because nine packs was the highest offer that I saw, I'm going to put nine packs and I'm going to put an acro bike. Because this way, somebody who's trying to sell their Dedenne GX will see my offer, understand that it's about as even they're, as they're probably gonna get, and it also still has a tempting card to sweeten the deal. So I hope that is a basic understanding of how to price check something as common as the Denny GX. Um, but focusing on the flipping aspect, let's say this trade goes through. If it does go through, I'm going to list for 10 Rebel Clash packs a Deden AGX, and then I'd be able to put that trade up. Now I'm going to add I'm going to add two electromagnetic radar. The reason I'm adding two electromagnetic radar is because I have 27 of them. So as a result, losing two of them is not important to me at all. However, somebody who's trying to find a Deden AGX at an affordable price will see this trade and be and say to themselves, oh, not only will I get my Deden AGX, but I'll also get some two electromagnetic radars, which can be used in my decks. So I'm gonna list that trade at the eight hour mark. Now regarding how to now regarding when making trades, so as you saw, there was a prompt that allowed me to make an eight hour trade, a twenty four hour trade, or a 48 hour trade. Now, regarding these kinds of trades, it is always best when you are starting off to only make eight hour trades. If you only make eight hour trades, you'll be in the best position because keep in mind, the more people that see your trade, the more likely it is that someone will take it. So despite it being up for longer, keep in mind that most people aren't gonna scroll past they aren't going to scroll for very long. We're going to reset the filter so that way I can see every trade. But notice how the average player in this game isn't going to scroll to the three-hour mark or something. They're going to scroll like this, and if they've got a decent collection, they're going to notice that they're not able to see many trades. So their goal is just going to be looking at the bottom here and taking a trade that they think is good. Now... As I'm sure some of you are aware, that is probably one of the worst things to do in this game. The reason why it's one of the worst things to do in this game is because I'm just gonna, I will get into under, I will get into what I'm doing right now a little bit sooner. Um, but the reason why it is one of the worst things you can do in the game is because of an understanding that there are other people playing this game. So. When there are other people playing the game at the same time, there are people that are going to be looking at the trade section at the same time that you are. So that means that if they find a sweet deal, then they'll probably take it themselves. And they will probably make sure that they're capitalizing off of it because why not take free profit? Now, where this comes, where this affects you is that there are a lot of people looking at trades. So notice we've, we've, we've loaded trades a little bit now. Now, reminder of the times that I said, eight hour mark, 24 hour mark, and 48 hour mark. These are gonna pay, these are gonna uh, actually be very important as we move on to another section. Uh, and for now, I'm gonna show you that if we go to the eight hour section, we can see a lot of trades. So notice how Fire Crystal looking like nine packs now. Now I don't want I don't want my Fire Crystal, so that's why I'm taking the trade. And now we see two packs, 
and uh, and a common chest for an Hoopa GX. I don't want Hoopa GX, and that seems like a reasonable way to get rid of it. So I took that trade. Uh, I don't see anything else popping out at me as a sweet deal. But notice how a lot of these trades that we're seeing up here are a lot closer to the prices that I was giving. So like if we look at the Dedenne GX, if we just scroll down a little bit, there was one offer that I saw. Yeah, here it is. So 10 packs for Dedenne GX. It's a little bit higher than some people would think, but it's also about even as we found uh, in our as we found in our simple price check. So from that understanding, we can always just scroll down and look at the 24 hour mark. And what do we see at the 24 hour mark? Nothing really of interest. We'll pass on these. Um, it's important when you're looking at these kinds of trades to have an idea of what your cards go are going for. And I'll be sure to go over a way for you guys to check that. So I took this trade because I needed to finish a place at about double anyways. And I had plenty of pink urchin B. So I'm more than happy to get some of those in my, in my collection. So that does that for understanding public trades very easily. As you can see, it's very straightforward in that you'll be able to easily see what you're getting, what you're giving, and I think one of the coolest features is that if we scroll here, nope, that's not it. Uh, let's look for a little. Nope, that's not it. We're trying to find a trade with a sizable number of Pokemon. Here we go. So notice how it has this little scroll feature. And notice how I cannot accept the trade. You have to scroll to the very bottom before the accept the trade button becomes usable. Now, what makes this so cool in my eyes is that this prevents somebody from getting scammed. It makes it very easy for you guys to look through your trade and see what you're getting, see what you're giving, and make an informed decision before you accept that trade, even on accident. So that's, I think that will conclude our little public trade section. So now we're going to move on to, let's see what comes next. So now we're going to discuss flipping a little bit deeper. So what to do and what not to do. There are obviously cards that will be easier to flip than others. So this include this is varying heavily based on the amount of demand that people have for them, the quantity that you'll be able to find on a regular basis, as well as how much you're able to get it for. So as a result, something... Uh, some examples of cards that are great to flip are trainers, cards with high prices, and any Pokemon that sees a lot of circulation at any time. So a perfect example of this would be Spiritomb. Spiritomb is a highly sought after card in the overall respect of the game because a lot of people are trying to build a deck with Spiritomb because Spiritomb is actually a very good card. Um, but the main thing is that, is it hard to get a Spiritomb? Yes, it's hard to get a Spiritomb very easily, which is why it's important when you're flipping to understand that you need to, at the same time that you are getting cards, at the same time that you are getting rid of your cards and selling them for a profit, you need to be optimizing your way of getting them che cheaper. If you can optimize your way of getting those cards cheaper, it will make it easier in the long run for you to get, for you to make a profit and afford the cards that you want. Plus, over time, as long as you're making profit on your on your trades, then you will be able to take advantage of this and increase the amount of trades that you make. So, now covering trainers, trainers will uh, people always need their trainers for their deck. So as a result, you can easily take your trainers, buy them cheaply, and then sell them for a lot greater than what you sold them at. I mean, what you bought them at. Uh, then for cheap, then you can look at uh, cards with very high prices. The thing about cards that with very high prices is that the demand for them will be constant. 
but the price is ever changing de depending on who has what at any given time. So there, a good example would be that shift tree that I showed in, earlier in the video, which is worth a lot, which is worth a, an outstanding amount that I will not get into at this time. We may make a future video uh, covering how those cards work. However, um, just for a placeholder number, 5,000. So it's worth 5,000. Now what ended up happening was that somebody actually came out and they had eight of these shift trees and they sold them. And what ended up happening to the shift trees is that they went from 5,000 to 4,000 or so just because of one person creating a bigger market for it. By creating a bigger market for it, you oversaturate it, you de decrease the amount of people that want it, and as a result, the price drops. Now, where this is important for you guys is that we can pay attention to real-life products. So before the Rebel Clash, before the tool, trainer toolkit that came out with Dedenne GX, Dedenne GX, the regular art, the full art, and the rainbow went from a range of 17 packs to 35 packs. And this range was is covering the three, four days before the set dropped, before the toolkit dropped. However, keep in mind, 17 is a lot bigger than 10. 35 is more than three times bigger than 10. So as a result, it's very important to, do, if you're flipping, realize that real life products will have a genuine effect on your trades. Now we will be covering later on how you can also take advantage of this if you're a beginner, but for now that is something that to keep in mind for the future. Now, cards that are bad to flip. Now, Bad is definitely very subjective in this case. However, uh, things that are bad to flip are main cards in several meta decks. So an example for this would be Dedenne GX. But the reason why Dedenne GX is a little, it can be considered a bad flip will be because of the number of people who are posting trades for them. Because of the amount of competition that you have, the chances that you will make a major profit at any time significantly decreases. So when we also look at promos, promos are also something that is a lot harder to flip. It's because they print an ungodly amount every single set, every single time they make one. So as a result, it, it happens that you can't, really, uh, you can't really figure out what is the cheapest way to pick something up and what is the cheapest and what is the most profitable way to sell something because... There's times where demand is high, supply is low, and they come far and a uh, few between. However, promos can be hard because waiting for that time can also cost you packs because you could have invested in something else which would have gotten you it a lot sooner. So three, the third thing that would be poor for, poor for flipping is self-explanatory in that it's just things with little demand, things that don't really have a lot of things going for them in terms of let's say let's say what's the name uh pink archon so if we go to the very beginning here here we go we see pink pink urchin v so if this pokemon is in the active spot uh and is damaged by an opponent's attacks flip three coins for each heads put three damage counters on the attacking pokemon so this ability is decent it's not particularly good because on average you're only going to get one to two flips so that means only 30 damage and 60 damage respectively and the attack is rather mediocre because for three energy i could be doing a lot more damage than 120 depending on just whatever mod i'm using and 170 hp is also rather low for a pokemon v so pink Hurchin v is an example of a pokemon that doesn't really see that much demand the fact that we saw that double trade earlier in the video is actually rather surprising in this sense. But it is an example of a Pokemon that would be difficult to flip because not only can you get it so for very cheaply, but you won't be able to sell it at a profit very easily at all. However, let's move on to something else that makes this possible. It's This, is called, this section will be called bundling. The p purpose of bundling is is to create the core of a deck, create the core of an idea for a deck that people are trying to build, 
and selling that idea for a larger number of packs. So an example of this would be if I went to Cosmic Eclipse Packs and I asked for 10 Cosmic Eclipse Packs and I wanted to sell a Nuzzle deck, which is the Raichu deck from Cosmic Eclipse. So I would search Nuzzle here, I would add three, I would add one, I would add one, two, three, four, I would add one, I would add one, two, three, four, I would add one, two, three, four, and I would add one, two, three. So now, in this specific case, I would ask for more packs. However, um, however, if these were all the regular arts, um, you would be able to see that this is really not giving that much for a larger number of packs. I'm giving 20 cards, one of which is um, actually rare enough, uh, actually rare enough to be difficult to get. And the rest of them are just common cards. So this is a bundle in that it's combining every single Pokemon that people are going to be looking for to play this deck. However, you are charging an excessive rate. And honestly, it's rather strange just how high these success rates are depending on how popular the deck is at the time. So the, th the big thing with bundling is knowing what decks people want to build. If you can know exactly what decks people want to build, let's say there was a popular Inteleon, de Inteleon deck that just came out. So if I were to mark Rebel Clash and I wanted, I'm just going to put 15 Rebel Clash. I sold all my Inteleons just the other day. So unfortunately, we're almost out of those. However, in the deck, you do need Articuno, you'd need Articuno GX, and you need Inteleon. And I think I've at least got a few. Yeah, so I've got one VMAX and I've got one FA. So I would personally put two of each, and unfortunately I can't right now, and then I would ask for 20 packs. And I would toss in some some holographic energy, because I, pl I have plenty from all of my trades. But if you can't, then feel free to just toss in Sword and Shield energy. I'm sure that somebody would find that deal tempting. So the point of this bum bundle is to give somebody the co components for the new Inteleon deck that they are trying to build. And at the same time, you're going to get a little bit of profit, and they're going to be able to get all the cards that they're looking for at once. So this is the, prof this is the idea of bundling. You'll be able to test your trades over time, and it will be extremely valuable to you in the future because you'll be able to see what works, what doesn't, and what do I want to try again later. Um, so that moves us on to actually testing trades, testing flipping, because flips do not come too easily. I could make one right now, but I would not have a 100% chance that it would work very well. So you're using the blind eye, hoping that something sticks eventually, um, but you're gonna but to fix this we're gonna be optimizing them We're gonna be figuring out ways to add a card here or there or remove a card here or there or make the deal a little bit more tempting just by adding one or two more trainer cards that would be good um, and it's just figuring out what is the be what is the maximum output I can get out of my trade without losing effectiveness so, this will be something that you'll have to test on your own, and this will happen over time. But as long as you do it, you'll be able to create successful flips, and you'll be able to earn a, a passive profit in this game. So covering the pros and cons of flipping, flipping is obviously one of the obviously one of the better ways to easily make a profit in this game. However, it can be extremely time consuming in terms of posting trades, in terms of testing new flips, in terms of earning coins for trades that will expire, uh, especially as trades that take hours to go through. So as a result, something that I suggest to people when they're starting when they're starting out is to post three, four trades in the morning, post three, four trades at around lunch, and post three, four trades before you go to sleep. And you'll be able to, uh, this will only take about a half hour each at maximum. You can probably, you can probably bring it down to less really easily. Um, but the idea is to post a couple trades every, every day just to make sure that you're making a steady profit, making sure that you're making steady headway on your collection. And you'll be able to make a passive profit while you're going about your day. 
So a lack of knowledge will also cause you to f fail in making successful flips, which is why joining my Discord, uh, talk using the price guide that I'll be bringing up later in this video, and a variety of other things will be the best resources to you guys to, f to figure out how can I flip without getting scammed or without uh, accidentally offering something for a lot less than it actually is worth. So it does have many pros in that respect because there is a lot of resources out there um, and it is definitely one of the fastest methods outside of sniping, which we'll be getting to very soon, uh, in terms that this can be both spread out over a very long term a period of time, but it can also be short term, and it has very high consistency rates uh, due to a lack of dependence on others, uh, falling prey to your scams, and instead you are going to take advantage of your own ability to understand what people want. Thank you for watching the flip tutorial. We're going to be moving on to sniping now. So sniping is another one of the major ways to trade in this game. So uh, the way to snipe is, as I mentioned before, the closer that you get to the 7 hour 59 mark, the 8 hour mark, uh, the 23 hour 59 mark with the 24 hour mark, or the 47 59 mark with the 48 hour mark, you will find more and more fair trades. So something that has actually been learned from this is that a lot of people will actually post trades that are in your favor at the 8 hour mark, 24 hour mark, and 48 hour mark because they can't upload them anywhere else. Um, but as a result, there is an entire branch of, of trading in this game which completely centralizes around getting to the 8 hour mark and taking a trade. So that's actually what we were doing a little bit before so we can review our trades and see that I sold my fire crystal for nine packs. I'm not going to be using it, so the nine packs does not mean anything to me. I probably sold that at around even value, if not a little bit better. But I could be wrong, and that's where the price guy will be helping us later in this video. So then the Hoopa GX, I have no use for Hoopa GX, and this is looking like about 0.75 in value, just at a first glance. And I am more than happy to take 0.75 for a Hoopa, considering I picked them up at around 0.5. Uh, next, we have Garbodor. Garbodor I pick up cheaply. And then we've got the Double. Double I will eventually be able to sell over time for a lot greater than the Pink Kirchen V. So that is the main benefit of that. So we went to the 7 hour 59 mark, the 24 hour mark, as well as the 48 hour mark in one sitting just to find out where were the best trades. So obviously, we loaded trades very quickly there, which is where I'm going to get into filtering. Uh, we're going to look at snipes here real quick because I am addicted to this kind of stuff. It's just rather fun because it's rather entertaining to see what kinds of offers you'll be able to see, what kind of offers you'll be able to get, and if you miss them, that just means that somebody else got lucky too, and good on them. So as is, I'm not seeing any major snipes, which means that we're just going to go on to talking about filters. Yes. We're just going to talk about filters. So I clicked on avatar. The point of avatar is that if I only check I am getting, then there are, and I check do the check mark, then there are a lot of trades that I can see just for my own acceptable trades. If I uncheck the unaccept, unacceptable, there's even more trades. Um, but just looking at the ones that I can access, we'll see a lot of these kinds of trades. Now my goal is to make it to the 7 hour 59 mark as quickly as possible. And what do I want to do when I get there? I want to uncheck filters, I want to look at the 7 hour 59 mark, and I want to take a trade after reviewing what's there, after looking at the profitable rates for things, and figuring out what is the best thing for me to take. Obviously this time I didn't see anything of, of complete note, so I'm just going to pass this time. And to reset, you can either click the refresh button, or if the refresh button is not working, you can then, you can click any of these tabs and then click back, and you'll be able to reload again. Now, the purpose of filters is because filters will be able to sort through your trades a lot faster than otherwise. So the reason why we use filters is because it will be able to get us through. I like doing this because pants are common, see common trades just like this. Um, and they see just enough for me to be able to see them on a regular basis. 
now I'm just letting that uh, letting that uh, load all the trades because notice if we uncheck the check mark, it's it has loaded every trade for the first 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and all of a sudden we realize, hold up, it's loaded three and a half hours already. That was just a couple seconds. So that is the best way to go about it. And something also important to note, uh, which was actually a very, very recent change, is the fact that if I accept a trade, so let's just find one that won't hurt me too much. Uh, here we go. So this is a fine trade. So if I accept this trade, I can always just continue looking at trades. So this was actually something that was cha changed recently before you would have to re-scroll your trades every single time. But this makes it a lot easier. So I hope that you guys take advantage of that and learn how to snipe. Sniping is actually how I got my uh, account as big as it is. And I am grateful for having such a method. The purpose of sniping, just at its core, is having the fundamental understanding that some people are desperate for what things they want at any given time and they do not want to wait and they want it right then so as a result for those people it is a common occurrence that let's say i want a dedenne gx and obviously we know that this is about between nine to ten packs but they will offer they'll offer 15 16 packs and then they'll put that on they'll put that as a trade because they want their Dedenne right then. They don't care about the over they don't care about the overcommitment, they don't care about the overpay and they want their Dedenne GX right there. The purpose of a sniper, the purpose of sniping is to take advantage of those people who are wanting it right then and taking advantage of them in the sense that you will be able to make a profit off of their uh, desire to get those cards right then and you'll be able to be patient enough to get your card to sell it at a profit to buy it back at a cheaper price and then have that profit to do whatever you want with so that's the most important part about sniping and just what it is at its core um, there was actually a, a formal reddit thread discussing sniping versus uh, scamming and just trying to figure out which one is more morally deplorable. Now, what ended up happening to be the final argument for a lot of people is that scamming is a deceptive offer, and as a result, it shouldn't be allowed in any sense, any form, any medium, uh, versus sniping, which actually is a mutually agreed uh, trade between both sides in that whoever posted it is fully aware of whatever they posted. Uh, they're not going to accidentally add a hundred more things and then still have to pay the eight pack cost and if they do they will take the hit on that because they were not careful uh, with something as simple as that uh, so as a result uh, sniping is something to look at now we are gonna also touch on something really quickly that is also touched in whatever I'm going to be showing you later uh, beach so as you can see here I could get three 34 dead GX for tropical beach no, thank you, but that is there. Uh, then I could also be look, giving six for melodics. No, thank you. I will pass on that. Thank you very much. Uh, but as we load more, it's going to show us more trades. And we will see uh, that there's actually something that you need to look out for very carefully. So these are actually scams. Uh, well, not these. these. These trades specifically are not scams, uh, but... What we're trying to focus on is something that we haven't seen yet. Whenever it comes up, I will show it to you. But the main purpose is that uh, what people will do in a trade is that they will uh, they will put down trainers that don't look like they don't don't look like they're very much. And on their side, you'll be getting something that you're looking you're looking for and you'll be giving a beach because the beach is actually hidden in but this can also be done for a lot of other cards now uh has alex posted in a while if alex has posted in a while then we're sure to see something alex cheng is definitely a name that you will come to recognize if you ever get a pro tropical beach <laughs>
if we look here, that's actually surprising. We're not seeing any tropical beach scams. And I have to say, I'm very glad that that is the case. So here we see this trade. I'm not, I don't have that type of, I don't have that tropical beach right now. And I don't plan to take this kind of trade. Uh, but yeah, that should give you a basic understanding of tropical beach has a very high, very high value. And as a result, uh, can be difficult to get your hands on too easily. Um, but the main important thing here is that scams will be there. Uh, actually, it's funny because this Crowback guy actually fell for one once. And as a result, we were able to uh, help him out in that. We were able to find the person who scammed him and make them give back the tropical beach. It wasn't making. There was no way we could force it. But we did our best, and they were willing to give it back, considering they were scamming. And uh, it's something that, yeah, uh, the document that I have will definitely explain it perfectly in that it's they will look too good to be true. And to sweeten the deal and speed up the process, they will put a Dedenne GX or multiple Dedennes or Zacian V or something like that. And it's a small amount of users that most of the time do this, however... Uh, it's definitely one of the worst aspects of trading, I would say, just because it's always having to look out for these kinds of people. And I guess you could always have the, you could always have the, uh, ideal that good on them for getting the trade to go through, but also there's no reason they should be praised for their actions. So I hope that's a basic understanding of how scams will be affecting you, um, now, discussing the pros and cons of sniping, sniping can be one of the most or one of the least rewarding methods of PDCGO trading. It's one of the most in that it yields very large returns depending on whatever trades you get, uh, but it can also, at the same time, yield no returns whatsoever if you're unable to find the trades that you need, unable to find the trades that you want specifically. The biggest issue is that it generally requires a decently sized and exp uh decently sized collection. The way to get this collection I found personally was by sniping. However, that's not the case for everyone. And there are a lot of snipes out there, but at the same time, when there's a lot of people that are also sniping, it can be very hard to uh, get those packs. Now, if you've got a good enough collection, let's say you've just got one set filled out, you're more than ready to start sniping. Uh, as long as you're sniping at the appropriate times, just because if we look at, uh, there are actually some trading gu diagrams that were made by the price guide maker that I'm going to be showing you in a bit, uh, that actually discuss when trades are most taken and when trades, uh, are most posted. And it's discussing what kinds of trades are, uh, going, well, it's more so with the idea that when are most people on, when are most people going to be able to accept the trades that you post? Or when are you going to have the best chance of getting a good snipe? So uh, I will not be showing this. You, If you want to, you can go and join the Discord server, which will, be in the serv which will be in the description down below, and you'll have access to those graphs. Um, now for making a decent profit off of sniping you, you can easily make a pr decent profit from the ones that i made just from the ones that we just made on stream well on video uh i would say that these three trades would net me about five packs total just because i would be able to oversell and overutilize the rebel clash pack and overutilize the packs as well as uh buy back the fire crystal for a little bit less than what i what i sold it for so as a result, those would be the best ways. Now, I will be leaving the video here for now. There will be a part two coming in about a week, week and a half or so, but this should suffice in the, in the time being for understanding how to trade. Thank you to everybody who watched, and I hope you have a... Actually, we, we, will, we will cover the price guide. We will cover the price guide real, real quick. Uh, let me get it, pull it up real quick for you guys. Alrighty, so now you can see that I'm loading it up. So this is pdcgoprices.com. Uh, you'll be able to see this linked in my Discord server. You'll be it'll be easily accessible. And if you ask me on stream, I'll be more than happy to tell you that pdcgoprices.com is the place to go uh, to.
So as you can see, it's got a, a large number of cards. Now, the way that this runs, the way that this runs is actually using a, a bot. It's completely using a bot. And what this bot does is it scans public trades and it looks for what trades are up. So let's say we wanted to use the search tool to search to Denny GX. Now we see that there's 11 to uh, 10 to 11, there's 13 to 5, 15 for this pack, and then there's 15 to 39. Uh, yeah, that one tends to be a little bit more variable. Uh, so as a result, we're going to... So you can see all sorts of cards from there. You can also use control find and then uh, just which is the control button plus F and you'll be able to search down your search down your cards and see them like this as well now on the website the website is missing a couple cards ha uh, Just because that new that new to Denny tends to be rather new and it's hard to find But it also helps for these cards where you'll be able to see that the reverse holo for Jirachi tends to go for about five packs Taking the median of the two values the holo for Jirachi goes for about five packs taking the median of the two values and then we find that there's the non hollow which actually is going for a little bit less, between four and between five. So this is a very valuable resource for any for a majority of the cards that you'll be looking for. And I hope that you guys join the Discord Discord server to get any help on the cards that you won't be able to get as clear of a value on. As well as we've also got a bot that you can use in the server, and you'll be able to see a bunch of the prices as well as how they're formatted. Uh, you won't be able to see the most beneficial feature of this, which I'm about to show right now. Um, however, it does do a majority of the grunt work in terms of understanding how much things are worth right then. Now, the thing that I was saying for what you need to understand for long term is if we click on this, we can see its pricing. We can notice how it climbed steadily over time and then it finally hit a huge point where it just started scaling upwards at a massive rate and then Rebel Clash came out and in terms of Rebel Clash packs, it was not worth very much. It was still worth greater than 10. And then over time, it started falling, it started farting, falling and then at this point, around this time frame, uh, we actually got the Pikachu and Zekrom Battle Arena deck. And the Pikachu and Zekrom Battle Arena deck came out with four of these Jirachis for, f for basically free. So as a result, the price just started plummeting and plummeting and plummeting. Now the important thing for this graph is that if I actually highlight on this section, it will zoom in on this section and create a new graph out of it. Oh, it seems that that glitch is not going, not working anymore, not working again. Uh, but yeah, you can zoom in on a section if you tr truly desire, and I guess it's not working right now, so I guess don't zoom in for now, but you'll be able to see this. Now, something to note for ptcgo.com is that it does crash Google Chrome on a mobile browser. At least that is what has happened on my phone for multiple times, so I, do, I will give that as a short heads up. However, keep in mind, you can always join our Discord server, and you'll be able to use the, the price checking bot which will be able to give you access to all sorts of prices. So that is the price guide. Um, I don't believe there's anything else for us to cover for day one trading. So besides that, I hope you have a lovely night. Again, feel free to join the Discord server and we'll be happy to help you with any trades that what you desire. And now we will move on to a, a, a sponsor, our sponsor, Card Cavern TCG. So. Card Cavern TCG is actually great for all things codes. You can see there, you've been able to see their logo in the bottom corner for the whole time. I will hide that now because we are actually showing, showing off one of the coolest things about their site. So they have the Hidden Fates 10 Charizard GX deck code for 23 cents each. Now, if we also look at the Gyarados de uh, GX, GX deck, there we go. So the deck code is also 20 cents each. And now Raichu GX deck, here it is, also 20 cents each. Now I'm gonna go into why this is actually such a huge deal right now. So if we go back to the Pokemon Trading Card Game Online, PTCGO, uh, and I go to decks. So this Gyarados GX deck is actually what redeems when you cash in that code. 
when you you when after you buy that code, this is what you you'll get. So you'll get Articuno, which is being used in that in that Inteleon deck. You'll be able to get Naganadel, which is used in the Bolton Naganadel deck. You'll be able to get Quagsire, which is used in a in a in its own archetype, where Quagsire Naganadel is used for its own typing, as well as a bunch of actually very good trainers. Verdian Forest is hard to Verdian Forest is hard to easily come by, and Audino is also a great uh, is a great replacement for Jirachi if you don't have them already. So as a result, I highly suggest at least picking up one of this deck. Pick up two if you're able to, if if it's as easy as paying twenty cents each. Um, and other than that, now let's go on to the Charizard G uh, GX deck. So as you can see, the Charizard GX deck is probably a little bit better just because you've got Turnator. Turnator plus Naganadel is also a deck, so com so combining the two decks is possible. Uh, then you've also got Arcanine. Arcanine is great for as a budget card because it hits such huge numbers, and you've got a way to set it up in terms of Welder. Welder is one of the most important supporters right now in the game, and it comes virtually free uh, just by getting this deck code. Uh, you'll also get Giant Hearth as well as Fire Crystal, which are very important to the decks that would be using this card, as well as Salazzle, which has Roast Reveal as a built-in draw engine for your cards. So you can actually build a variety of decks using these cards and just these cards. So I would suggest for this one also buying two. The last one would be... Raichu GX. So Raichu GX comes with Zebstrika, which is great for Excel Excadrill. Uh, you've also got Orangaroo, which is great for any control deck. You've got Magnezone, which is good for any uh, electric turbo deck. You've got Zorora, which uh, which is good for a variety of, of budget decks. And notice how I've been ignoring the GX Pokemon. The GX Pokemon have actually not been good. Uh, so we're actually completely ignoring them because we don't care about them. We care about the cards that come with it. Uh, we care about what you guys are getting out of it, not what you guys are not getting out of it. And then you also get Electro Powers. Electro Powers are also hugely sought after right now because of the Picarom deck. Uh, you'll be able to get Poke Gears. You'll be able to get Electromagnetic Radars, which, as we saw, as we uh, showed before, can actually be put in a trade to make a bundle. Uh, you also get rare candies. Rare candies are incredibly important later on, uh, so I highly suggest also getting two of this deck. Now, going back to Card Cavern, this is where this is important. You'll notice that obviously this is incredibly cheap. You'll be able to get two for forty cents, two for forty cents, and two for forty-six cents. So that totals up to one dollar and twenty-six cents. So that's incredibly cheap. Now there is a there is a minimum that you have to hit for Card Cavern in that you have to have at least five dollars in orders. So I would most suggest, uh, personally, I would most suggest just getting the random code if they've still got it. I don't see the random code anymore, but it used to be that they had a uh, 15 cent random code that you could get. But re besides that, you can also look at the set cards. This is also very important because you can look at the resource that I have actually made over time, which is called the shortlist. So this is also linked in our server, and you'll have uh, very uh, much easier access to it in our server. Um, but as you can see, I actually hold uh, a little pack ratios page, and you'll be able to see exactly how, what packs are worth. So you can compare this with card cavern's prices, uh, which are all competitively based, and you'll be able to make the most advantage, most out of your cards by taking the packs that are worth the most for the cheapest price. So this may be a little bit more involved. However, it will make you hit that five dollar uh, that five dollar minimum very much quicker. And I would say the only other thing to focus on for this is that uh, we actually have a discount code for you. So please take advantage of this as much as you can. Uh, the discount code is Vic Sun. I'm going to put this in. There we go. So that is our discount code. 
And as you can see, it's only six letters, nice and easy to type, and you'll be able to actually do this reliably quick, quickly. Uh, it, it also should work on Honey, and otherwise uh, you'll be able to use that code, get 5% off your order, and it will help support me and this channel as we go forward. So thank you so much to everybody who has watched uh, thus far. If you need help building budget decks, join the Discord server. It's the best thing I can suggest to you. Uh, here, let's get... So as you can see, we've got the text on screen as well. Whoop. So as you can see, we've got the text on screen as well. It's nice and easy to type out. Uh, there's no two difficult letters, two difficult words. And thank you to everybody who has watched. This was editing on the fly. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you come for part two, which will be coming out in the coming weeks. The problem is, is that I have to uh, make sure that I have content that you guys will find interesting. Otherwise, uh, I will be referencing the document that I used to got, walk me through this. Uh, and there is definitely a lot more that you can look at there that will be able to walk you through uh, how to play this game better uh, and how to make the most out of your packs. Uh, if, you have any if you have any specific questions regarding prices, if you have any specific questions about regarding ratios or regarding this video, feel free to join the Discord server. Give me a holler. I'm always, a I'm always around almost. Uh, otherwise, my one of my mods would also be willing to help you. And thank you so much, and have a good one.